Hey everybody, GC13 here. It's probably a pretty safe bet that most of you watching are fans of cartoons, but how many of you are fans of wrestling too? Wrestling may not be as big as it once was, but cartoon episodes featuring wrestling are still being made. Some may barely focus on the wrestling at all, some may have a confused understanding of it, and still more may have nuances lost on those who weren't familiar with wrestling. Well, today I'm here to talk about Pencil Break Mania from Craig of the Creek. You can be sure that any wrestling episode made with the help of Matt Burnett and Ben Levin will be accurate. Those guys are big fans. So what I'm here to do is walk you through the episode and point out things you might have missed if you're not into the wrestling scene. I guess we should start at the beginning. The random challenge of JP by Paintball Benny is really the only place the episode doesn't strive for accuracy to wrestling. Benny does cut a quick promo on JP, even throwing in a brother for that old school appeal, but wrestlers wouldn't be having a match without an audience. Also, even if there had been an audience, Benny wouldn't have lost his title after this match if this had been wrestling, since he never put the belt on the line. Yes, the champion can still have non-championship matches. After Nate shows up, though, we're feeling that authentic wrestling spirit. He has entrance music, a banner simulating an entrance video, and he immediately makes it clear that he's a bad guy authority figure like WWE has been in love with since the 90s. He doesn't want JP to be his champion, you see and wants to take the belt off him by subjecting him to a grueling gauntlet match. Oh yes, and he does the Vince walk. WWE actually did almost this exact iteration of the Not My Champion storyline fairly recently with a wrestler called Kofi Kingston. Vince McMahon, real life and in-storyline owner of the WWE, would come on stage to throw obstacle after obstacle into Kofi's way until he finally climbed the mountain and won the title at WrestleMania. A couple of these first bits are just interesting tidbits. As the ring is set up and the fans appear, we see the wrestling signs, including a classic, The Kid Behind Me Can't See. JP's first opponent has several nicknames, which some wrestlers seem to enjoy collecting. And, uh, well, Toman has plenty for the entire roster. It's Sparkle Cadet that brings us back to the more interesting stuff. In actual wrestling, intergender matches are basically a no-no if your matches are televised, since advertisers don't like them. Lucha Underground, on the El Rey Network? was able to have plenty of them, though, even having their world title held by Sexy Star very briefly. Of course, the sport of pencil break is quite different from wrestling, so intergender matches wouldn't run afoul of audiences or advertisers. The Sparkle Cadet match is chosen to toss in another wrestling rule. Not only can you lose a wrestling match by being pinned for three seconds, you can lose if you stay out of the ring for too long. American promotions tend to use a 10 count, Japanese a 20. Five would probably be too short for a show with two hours to fill, but it's an 11-minute episode, so I understand. Also, if it sounded to you like Referee David waited to say five, well, I agree with you. Nobody wants to see a match end in a countout. Boris brings in some new tropes, that of the heel and that of the manager. And is... is that Paul Bearer's urn? Anyway, the heel is the designated bad guy. He's there to be an obstacle for the good guy to have to triumph over. Boris is specifically what's called a monster heel. He's demolished a lot of lesser good guys over his time in the World Creek Pencil Break Federation, so when JP finally digs down deep and conquers him, it instantly makes him a big deal and proves he's worthy to hold the belt. Tony is Boris's manager. When Boris isn't breaking pencils, it would be Tony's job to do the speaking for him, since Boris probably can't cut the scathing promos Benny can. Pencil Break Mania shows what a manager does in the ring, though. When it looks like JP might actually get to take a shot, he distracts the referee so his client can cheat without getting disqualified. Remember, kids, if the ref didn't see it, it didn't happen. Except when refs come in who weren't at ringside. But don't worry about that. Kelsey also shows why a good guy would want someone ringside. JP may not expect Kelsey to cheat for him, but having someone who can jump in to even the odds shows that you're not just a dumb baby face. The way she puts Tony through the announcer table is also a classic. Even if JP had lost the match, humiliating Tony like that gives the audience a feel-good moment without making Boris look any weaker. Of course, JP runs the gauntlet and wins Nate's challenge, but Nate's got one more storyline to run, the buying of the championship. Naturally, our good guy JP refuses, but it turns out that just like how Vince McMahon has a brief history as a wrestler, Nate is also a pencil breaker. While Nate does much better in the ring than Vince ever did, he's the one who walks away without a championship, thanks to a pencil slam off of the top rope. But what they do have in common is the good old wrestling carny spirit. Nate's not mad, he's immediately pushing a rematch at the pay-per-view, I, I, I mean the paper pencil, and signing hot new talent Kelsey to the company. 
Is she any good at pencil breaking? Who knows? But are people excited after she fended off Boris with a chair? And will people pay to watch anyway? You bet. So, that's Pencil Break Mania, Craig of the Creek's wrestling episode. Matt and Ben are true fans, so I hope you enjoyed all of the loving nods and references that made it in. What was your favorite wrestling bit in the episode? What would you like to see them work into a sequel? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more cartoon videos.